Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome to a new StarCraft 2 Heart of the Swarm video. Today we're going to be discussing a pretty, you know, pretty difficult build order for Zerp versus Protals. This is a build order that Scarlet recently executed versus Minigun. This is actually um, a build that she did in both game number one and game number four, so we can quite easily figure out exactly what her decision making is. But it's one of the more difficult build orders for a Zerp player to go for. The reason for this is, is because she actually attacks with both Queens, Hydralisk, and a Nidus network. Now, this is obviously not the easiest units to mess around with, and if you do it versus the wrong proto strategy, you will just straight up get owned. Let's say, for example, you're pushing with this army out versus someone who's going Colossus expansion into a third base. <sighs> Probably not really going to work. So first and foremost, in order to execute this build order properly, you will need to be pretty damn good at StarCraft already, before I would even like, you know, consider this build order. Now in the exact build order that Scarlet does, she actually completely skips out the Roach Warren. And this is something because she plays Minigun, she knows that Minigun is likely not gonna do any kind of gateway harassment early on, so she knows she can actually skip that. However, if you're playing yourself, you're likely gonna want that build order. So if you take a look at the written description, uh, that is in a link right below that like button you will actually see that i put up the roach warren right there around the six to six and a half minute mark but in the actual game scarlet skips it just to be safe however i would advise you to get it now keep in mind this is definitely a great build order as long as you're actively scouting and that is actually the big big thing right now Besides that, in order to drone as hard as Scarlet does in this specific build, you will need to constantly scout around with Zerglings like she does. She is constantly running around with Zerglings, checking the front, checking where Chrono Boost is spent, checking if there's a third base up, um, you know, keeping all the watchtowers and all that kind of awesomeness. Now keep in mind, I'm not going to call for scouting this specific video, but you will need to do that very actively in order for this build to be successful. Other than that, let's just jump straight into the game and I will explain you the build. So here we are in the actual game. Now Scarlet is gonna open up pretty standard, really no trickery in the early game whatsoever. She will open up with an Overlord on 9 supply and follows that up with a 15 hatchery on the low ground considering it's a 4 player map. After that she gets a 16 spawning pool up and at 17 supply she gets another Overlord. Once the hatchery in the natural finishes up, she will use a drone and send that straight to the third base to make sure she can start the third hatchery right a little bit after the 4 minute mark. Right when the spawning pool finishes however, she will start double queen production. She then also starts one set of scouting zerglings while going straight back into droning. When the first two queens spawn, she will instantly inject with them and start a third queen in the natural as well. Now this queen that actually spawned at the natural will lay down a creep tumor with the next 25 energy and will then be moved towards the third base and start injecting over there. Right now Scarlet analyzes exactly what is happening and notices that her opponent is not going for any kind of aggression whatsoever. She knows that there's no chrono boost being spent anywhere, so she will be able to drone like a madman. She will start droning pretty much completely to max saturation at this point in time. At 44 supply, she will start double gas geyser in the main base, all the while she's obviously making more and more drones. And once these gas is finished, she will instantly saturate them and actually start a third gas geyser in the natural as well. Now normally this would also be the time that you get a roach warren up, but like I said, she is playing versus minigun and she knows he's likely not gonna do any kind of gateway aggression. So far it's been an extremely standard Zerg versus Protoss opener, but now she's gonna start transitioning into Hydralisk and queen. First of all, she is going to start a lair with the first 100 gas and once she starts a lair, she also starts an evolution chamber. When the evolution chamber finishes, she starts plus one missile attack upgrade and she will also start metabolic boost as soon as she has the minerals and gas available. Right when she hits max saturation, which is right around the seven and a half minute mark, she will start a fourth gas geyser in the natural as well as a fifth gas geyser in the third base. This push will be executed with five gas geysers only. When the lair finishes up, she will instantly start a Hydralisk den right here, and this is the point where she stops droning. She has max saturation in all bases, and this is the moment where she starts adding on more and more queens and more and more Hydralisks. So right when the Hydralisk den finishes, you need to make sure that you can start non-stop unit production, so you need to have the amount of drones that you really want in this game. Right when the Hydralisk den finishes, you will start the Groove Spine upgrade, as well as the Nidus network. All the upgrades that she's finishing up right now will actually finish right before that push will eventually happen. So she needs to make sure that she makes as many units as she possibly can. A smart little trick that she does use, however, is actually to load in the queens first. Let's say the Nidus Worm will get attacked while spawning, she can actually transfuse that right away. Right now she will start the Nidus Worm on the other side of the map and execute this push right a little bit after the 10 minute mark. While this push is going on, however, she is going to reinforce with more and more queens, more and more Hydralisk, 
but you will also start adding in a bunch of Zerglings. Keep in mind that you need to hit a right around the same timing as Scarlet does, because if you give the Protoss too much time to actually macro up a big army, there is absolutely no way that this push will actually work. So you will need to practice this until you actually manage to hit right around the 10 and a half minute mark like Scarlet does with all the upgrades finished up. At this point she will just simply overrun her opponent while reinforcing with more and more units out of the Nidus Worm. So yeah, that is pretty much it. A relatively easy to execute build order if you manage to scout exactly what your opponent is doing. And obviously if your opponent is doing some sort of tricky business, you will need to adjust accordingly. What I would definitely advise you to do is actually practice this build order before jumping on the ladder and trying it versus a real opponent. So what I would advise you to do is actually jump into a custom game, create a custom lobby, just add yourself in there and just practice this build maybe 3-4 times. If you can execute this properly, drone just as hard as Scarlet does, you will be able to execute this successfully versus all of your Protoss opponents. Keep in mind there's also a written version of this build order right below that like button and also I would definitely want to know what you're thinking of this video format. So if you want to let me know right below that like button in the comment section below, you will be freaking awesome. Alright guys, all for watching, have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile, subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you again. Hello everyone, my name is Loka and welcome to a new video for StarCraft 2 Heart of the Swarm. In this video, I'm going to be covering a very basic build order for the race Zerg. So what you want to do is go to a custom game, create... Really clock? Really?